This is an RTX 3080. This is also an RTX 3080, but one of them has a dark secret. Not that you can tell this at first glance, however. They do look identical. Same display out, same heatsink, same fans. But yes, one of them has been mined on non-stop for over a year. Which begs the question, should you buy a used GPU that may have been heavily used for mining? Because I did, and that's this guy right here. We're gonna call him Marvin. As far as I know, Marvin the mining GPU was born, beautifully packaged, sold to a scalper, then sold on eBay to a miner where he was gloriously unsheathed from his packaging and then immediately clamped into a mining rig to tirelessly scream at Ethereum's. I think that's how that works. Nevertheless, I found Marvin on eBay after contacting 13 different sellers to find the most heavily mined on 3080 Founders Edition I could, for the sole purpose of comparing him to this. This is Gary, Gary the gaming GPU. I bought Gary back in August and he's been pretty lightly used for gaming and editing since then. So today, we're going to be doing three things. Number one is cover the risks of buying a used mind on GPU and what to look out for if you do. Then we're going to be doing a physical objectification between Gary and Marvin, both fully clothed and not. Before we then take a look at any performance difference or degradation in performance from Marvin being abused since birth. And stay tuned to the end because I'm also going to give you some extremely useful advice and make sure that you're not buying the wrong GPUs because some are safer than others. So so is a rescue for life or is it actually just for Christmas? Let's find out. So I have a question. Are you an avid PC enthusiast stuck with that ugly ass Windows watermark ruining your gaming and streaming experience? Well, I have great news for you. WhoKeys is a software licensing website dedicated to getting you affordable keys. And the best part is you can get rid of that watermark in a matter of minutes. All you need to do is head down to the video description, click the sponsor link and enjoy an additional 25% off using my coupon code TL20. With PayPal checkout and quick key delivery, all you need to do is hit the Windows key, type activate and paste your key right here to become fully activated. It really is that simple and that cheap. So head down to the video description if that sounds right for you. And thank you Hookies for sponsoring this video. So here's a fun fact. The act of mining on a graphics processor is surprisingly less stressful than gaming because the core specifically isn't actually doing a whole lot while mining. Also not being heated and cooled frequently can increase the GPU's lifespan. But the problem is there are many more components of a graphics card and mining undoubtedly stresses some of them much, much worse. So the number one thing that will likely fail is the fans. Being a moving part and consistently spinning while mining, they're commonly the first to go. So if your fans are making any kind of abnormal noise, it's a good indication that they're going to need a replacement soon. Number two is the memory. Because the act of mining is so memory intensive for a lot of coins, including Ethereum, it builds up heat to a level that may not be assumed when the manufacturer made the cooler for that card. Memory normally runs at a much lower temperature while gaming, and the heat itself is number three. When a graphics card gets hot, everything gets hot. We're talking voltage regulators and capacitors, the solder, the core, and being mined on, there's no guarantee the temperature for everything was kept within spec. Which brings us to the warranty. I'll cover which companies have transferable warranties in a bit which should help you narrow down which one to buy but that won't cover you if the warranty has expired. Two to three years is typical depending on the manufacturer. Additionally your warranty may be transferable but voided if the previous owner has modified the card. So with everything that we just mentioned why the hell would you even consider buying a used card? Well comes down to price, doesn't it? And I fully expect used market prices to plummet soon. So although I fully understand that there are risks, the fact is if the price is right and you can mitigate a lot of those issues by just being smart, you're either saving money or getting a free upgrade while also reducing e-waste. And the good news is if you have become the proud owner of a rescue, it's actually a lot of fun and not that difficult to test it for flaws. So let's do that now. Okay, so what I want to do is start with a bit of a physical inspection. Have a brief look over the cards before we disassemble them. So if we can see any differences between Marvin the mining GPU and Gary the gaming GPU. Now first, right off the bat, I can see that there's a shroud piece right here this little angle, which seems to be raised compared to Gary the gaming GPU, which has been untouched. Now this may not necessarily be from somebody disassembling the card, but it's a good indication that it may have been disassembled. Otherwise, looking around the GPU, it looks to be in pretty good condition dust-wise. You can probably see underneath this fan blade that there is quite a bit of dust buildup underneath there. Can I get my finger in? Oh, that's kind of gross. It's definitely going to need a clean. Otherwise, Gary the gaming GPU, um, at least this dust is my own. Um, so let's do the same thing. 
it's a lot less dust. More dust means more resistance for the fan blades and it can actually also throw them off axis, which is also a bad thing. But more dust within the heatsink means that it's cooling less efficiently because the air is flowing through it less effectively. But otherwise it looks to be in reasonably similar condition for anything exposed. For Gary, you can actually see the fan shroud right there where the intake of my gaming PC has effectively just blocked that bit off so that dust hasn't hit it. In terms of Marvin, it's more, but it really does look like it's been maintained and cleaned. So that's absolutely a good sign. Aha, uh -huh. what do we have here? If you take a look right there, you can see that something is spilling out from the shroud. Now that's really quite interesting and actually might be a really good sign. So the next thing that we should really do is give them both a good solid clean and then run some benchmarks as well to see how they perform if there's any difference between them. But we're also going to disassemble Marvin and investigate some of the things that I just highlighted because that's definitely not meant to be there. Benchmarks are going to be your best option to determine whether you got a rescue with a terminal illness. So hardware-wise, I've gone as high-end as possible to reduce the chance of bottlenecks. 12900K, DDR5, and the stunning ASRock Z690 Tai Chi Razor Edition. A beautiful board with Thunderbolt 4, multi-gig networking, PCI Express 5.0, and a power delivery solution to back it up. So I'll have the full list with links in the video description for you if you want to check those out. But for benchmarks, the ones that I'm going to run are Unigen Heaven to test rendering performance, and as abuse from mining is our primary concern, we're also going to run OCCT's VRAM test and mine on it. I don't typically recommend mining for other reasons, but I do strongly recommend using a mining application to test if there's any flaws with the card. And comparing those two using Hardware Info 64, that odd spillage from earlier that we mentioned looks like it might be a thermal pad modification, commonly used by miners to better cool the memory. This does have advantages and trade-offs, however. While running the Unigen Heaven benchmark at completely stock settings, we're seeing that Gary maxed out at 79 degrees for GPU temperature, but consistently hit 100 degrees on the memory, with a delta of about 10 degrees between core temp and GPU hotspot. Marvin's memory on the other hand never got above 90 degrees C, but was typically 2 degrees hotter for the core with a delta of roughly around 15 degrees for the hotspot. We also see this trend while mining and gaming, and although Marvin's memory temperature is drastically lower, the actual gaming performance is almost identical. So if our thermal pad suspicions are correct, someone clearly put a lot of time and effort into keeping Marvin healthy. Okay, so what I want to do is investigate that thermal difference um, and see if our suspicions are correct about the thermal pad modification. So what we're going to do is open Marvin up. For the Founders Edition specifically, we're going to need this. Nom, nom, nom. So these little pieces right here need to come out. That's another one and the last one. Cool. Now in terms of Torx bit. But the process for removing any cooler of a GPU is essentially just find the screws and start unscrewing, really. See that right there? That is definitely a thermal pad. This would probably be power delivery for the card. Theoretically, with those removed, that should be enough to get this back plate off. Oh, that's on there tight. Kind of half worried that I'm going to have a back plate that does that. Oh, I think that was the shift we were looking for. Oh, wow. Okay, somebody went to town on this. These thermal pads are definitely not stock, nor is there that many of them on the backside of the GPU. Now we could open up Gary to compare against, but you'll have to forgive me for not doing that. Gary is the only other 3080 Founders Edition I own, and I know that this one is 100% stock, so I need to keep it that way for thermal testing in the future. I don't want my numbers to be adulterated by any of this, so he is remaining stock. Not many of them survived the backplate being removed which is kind of sad. So if I take off the front of this cooler, I probably don't have thermal pads to replace these and I'd need to order them. And that would put this card out of commission and I actually have plans for it right now. But out of the tons of GPUs that I've bought, this is actually the first one that I've received with this type of modification. And the funny thing is, this is actually a really, really good sign. If somebody went to the effort to do this modification, they obviously knew what they were doing. So clearly you can find great examples of used GPUs with people who, actually took care of them. So the question then becomes, how do you make it more likely that you're gonna receive a good card, maybe even a card like this that has been well looked after? And how do you not get scammed in the process? 
So we can see that Marvin was fortunate enough to be well looked after by his previous owner. But that doesn't mean that every GPU has been. I've personally bought dozens of GPUs in the past and some of them were abused beyond saving, which does normally show up as artifacting on screen while gaming, if the card works at all. But that doesn't mean that I've ever lost money and I have some simple yet extremely effective strategies for minimizing your risk. Starting out with what specific GPUs you should be looking to buy. I have already done this for you, but my process starts with the fans. As they're commonly the first to go, I typically wouldn't consider buying a used GPU that I can't easily get replacement fans for. Marvin is a founder's edition and replacement fans for this look almost impossible to source right now. This isn't good for his life expectancy. But once you have narrowed down a few GPUs, I would compare the model's core and memory temperature while mining. The lower the better. But as it's not always particularly easy to find the memory temperature, the core temperature is a fallback option. And the reason for this is because if the card has decent cooling, then it likely hasn't been modified. And if it hasn't been modified, your warranty may still be intact. Speaking of, as far as I know, EVGA are the only ones that explicitly state they honor the warranty for secondhand purchases, making them a standout option provided the card is newer. So request a serial number from the buyer and check that on EVGA's website. But warranties from Asus, EVGA, Gigabyte, and Nvidia are all three years, while other brands seem to be two. So based off that, I'm going to leave my top picks in the video description and the comment section for you guys. But now you know which GP to buy, how do you not get scammed? Well, pretty easy actually. Use eBay or other websites with decent buyer protection. It's also a good idea to set your phone up and video yourself unboxing the card in case you need proof of seller scamming. Then test everything you can as soon as you can and refer the temps and data back to places like Reddit and the manufacturer's specifications. You want to at least run a GPU benchmark, a memory test application, a mining application, and a handful of games. Maybe throw in some light overclocking too. But if anything seems off and you don't want to investigate, please just send it back, get your money, try again. So with the information in this video, you should have everything you need to save a rescue like Marvin here. And if you want to adopt your own rescue, make sure that you check out the curated list of GPUs to buy in the comment section and the video description. And if you do, please comment below the name that you gave them. Marvin is taken. But if you've gotten value from this video, feel free to share it with people who you think will appreciate it too. And if you're new here, get subscribed, turn on notifications, or at least check out another video before you do. Otherwise guys, remember a like is always appreciated and I hope you have an amazing day.